promised. Today is my birthday. I'm 31. Wow, what a big age. Who have been, who, who could think I'll be 31 with HIV? No one. Some people, I tell them I was born with HIV. They don't believe me. But I have doctors and other people who have seen me growing up and they know the reality. I am still here. There are times where doc doctors gave me only five day, five, five years. And I couldn't believe that I went beyond five years. I graduated from childhood to adolescence, from adolescence to adulthood. Guess what? Now I'm talking about aging with HIV. What, 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 what is going to look like? Sure, the world is busy searching for the cure, but what if it doesn't come in my lifetime? Is it going to stop me to be happy? Is it going to stop me to be a normal person? Come on, I'm a happy human being and I thank everyone who is working hard to make sure we have medication. I thank my doctors. I thank Dr. Bruno Girabatuari. I know wherever you are in the world, remember how you helped me. I thank Dr. Kawa Isabel Nair. I know you can see this video. I thank you, Dr. Kawa Isabel Nair. You have been there with me, helping me. Thank you. The work you have done as my doctors is not worthy the salary you were getting as medical practi practitioner because not only you treated me, but you built my personality. You made me believe that I can make it. I thank you. I thank my teachers. First of all, my first teacher was my, my dad. Dad, I thank you. You taught me to write my last name. I will never forget that. You were the person who taught me how to take a pen and how to write. Now look where I am. I'm writing books. I'm a key correspondent. I can write news, newsletters, blogs. I can pop, pop up articles in newspapers like the Washington Time and other newspapers that are important. Sure, you have sold a seed that has given a big tree. I am here. I'm still here. And I'm thankful for all you have done. No one believed that I can survive. Sure, no one believed that I can make it up to now. No one believed that I can go through the hard time I have gone, I have had to go through. There are times where I was so desperate. There are times where I was feeling like I can't make any other mo an, another path. But God made it, made me do it. He can make you make it too. Believe me, there are times where you feel like you are covered by the darkness. There are times where you feel like it's over. But believe me, that's the beginning of the beginning. Believe me, never say no and never give up in life. If I would have given up, today I would be illiterate. I, did, I, I couldn't be able to read or to write. But look, I tried my best. Have, I have a bachelor's degree, at least. I can read, I can write. I owe everything I have to my education because I made, I, I made sure I keep on being educated. 
guys, I am still here. That's what I want to tell you. I'm not dead. I am alive. And I'm alive. I'm thankful. I want to tell the world that I'm thankful. I'm thankful for everything that you have. God has given me to experience. Look what I had to go through. I had to go through stigma and discrimination when I was growing up. Imagine a child of five years. People pointing fingers on you. Saying maybe you are a sinner. Maybe your parents are sinners. Maybe it's a curse coming to you. Would you like that? But I was innocent. I kept going. I was innocent. I couldn't understand how people can be so awful. Uh, people cannot be com compassionate to other people. Yeah, I remember those days. I was thin, very thin. I remember the name they were giving me at school, skeleton. I remember at home, the housemates, how they were calling me Gahukabi, bad skin, because I was covered by skin rashes. I haven't forgotten. I still remember where I come from. That's where I come from. I come from a world, a world full of people who are not compassionate, people who are stigmatizing, people who don't understand about the disease. That's where I come from. Thanks to God, I'm still here. I'm not dead, I am alive. It was hard for me to go to school, but thanks to God, I made it. I went to school. I remember my father discussing with his friends that he was scared that I may die alone in my room. Guess what? My father was creative. He bought me a whistle. And he said, Claire, anytime you feel bad, just blow your whistle and call for help. He, he himself, as a father, didn't believe I can make it. But God knew that today I will be entertaining you, telling you the wonders he has done in my life. I made it and I'm still alive and I'm still alive with HIV you guys looking at me with my makeup my what I am still alive with HIV and I am here to tell you that I can have a productive life as a person living with HIV I'm not ashamed I'm not Ashamed to be with HIV. That's a, a medical condition. I am not. So many times HIV is associated with bad behaviors, questionable behaviors. Yeah. And people pretending to be people of God associated with a, a curse, a punishment from God. But it's not true. No. I didn't do any any sin. No way. It's not true. My father was not the whole worst sinner of the world. My mom didn't do anything wrong to die at the age of 20. How? She was born in 60. She died in 1988. To, to die at the age of 28. Yeah. So God made me make it. Yeah, I went to school. No one believed I would go to school. I make it. I graduated from childhood to adolescence. But before that, we were living in the winter of HIV. People were not understanding. They were not compassionate. We were treated as second world citizens. 
We were treated as if we are we deserve the punishment. We deserve the curse given to us. As a child, it was hard. But God made made me make it. And everyone who helped me, you know, in which way you helped me. Now I am here to tell you that the winter time of HIV is over. We finally got the spring time of HIV. I used to say this because that's how I describe the cycle, the cycle of HIV. And then we had a spring. The spring is 19, the years 19, 1993 where people like Magic Johnson, Elizabeth Grizel, and many others started shouting and saying, hey, HIV is for everybody. It can reach everywhere. It's not for sinners. It's not, it's not for prostitutes. It's not for gay men. It's for everybody. And if we don't stand, we will die all. Thanks to those people who made the first path, path, who made the first shout. Their shout made us where we are now. I salute them. All those pioneers, I salute you. Look what you did. You shouted. And now we have medication. Lives and lives of people are being saved by your shout. Yes, people may think having weapons is having big guns and bombs. No, even your voice has made a big difference. Now we're still here. We are not dead. We are still alive. We are happy to be still alive, to be breathing, to be enjoying the Son of God. To be enjoying everything we are seeing. The spring, many people got involved. Yes, United States came on, on top. They wanted to intervene. Sure, they did it. Many people came out. It was so shameful to say you are HIV positive. But because of your courage, look where I am. The world searched for the cure. We don't have the cure yet, but we have treatment. And the treatment is affordable for everyone. Thank you. I salute you. All the pioneers, all the activists of the years, the 80s, the 90s, the long-term survivor of HIV and AIDS, I salute you. You did a great job. And then we, because of your work, we were able to see the summer, summertime, where everybody was engaged in HIV and AIDS. The, the year is 2000, where we got treatment. We were able to, to enjoy treatment. Yes. Much funding was coming from to Africa. Many people pretended. Now everybody wanted to be HIV positive. Can you imagine? Yeah. <laughs> I know. When I was still in Africa, people were fighting to be HIV positive. I know community of people who injected themselves with the blood infected because it was summertime. Yeah. They wanted to get funding. They wanted to raise concern. Ma many people who became rich became rich because they founded non-profit organization to do what? To assist, to support people living with HIV. What they did? No way. 
their work is worthy 30% of what they were supposed to do. However, people with HIV got, got, got up and started to speak on their own to make a difference. Yeah, summertime I enjoyed medication, summertime I was able to make it through my college, summertime I made it through hardship, through side effect from medication. And for sure it was summertime for HIV but it was winter for me. I have lost my parents. I was head of household. I was a, a premature mom to a family. I had to feed and to raise my sisters. It was really hard. But guys, God made, made me make it. Sure, the summertime is over now. That's what I want to discuss with you. We are in the fall of HIV. It's not time to say, oh, we are so okay. We have medication. We don't need any more funding. You know, the problem is fixed. They can live longer. No, it's not time. This is time to wake up. This is time to wake up for our dignity. The reason why I'm going out open like this, it's not because I am I don't I I don't respect my privacy. No, it's to show the world that we can be positive and still be beautiful and still be productive and still be important in the world. Yeah. It's, this is time to stand for our dignity. HIV is associated with crime. We are fed up of crime in criminalization laws that make us feel different from the rest of the population. Come on, lawmakers, update yourself. There are ways HIV can be contracted. HIV of 2000 is no longer the same in 2014. Come on, update your laws and pull them in line with what we have, what the science can offer now. We are not criminals. Everyone should be responsible for his actions. For sure, if someone engages in a sexual relationship, they should be responsible, not the people living with HIV who are the devils who want to protect the angels of God. No, this is over. Everyone is responsible. I shouldn't be punished because someone doesn't want to, to protect himself. No. This is the fall time where we are having pressures from all over the or all, all, all sides. Where there's a pressure there, people feel like, you know, we can punish them, we can put them in jail for, in, for life, where stigma and discrimination is still high. Come on, how can you discriminate a beautiful woman like me? Come on, yeah, you know. You need to, need to be educated on how HIV can be contracted instead of stigmatizing me. Instead of just discriminating me from job. How did I get my degree? Do you think I stole it? No, I worked for it. How did I get where I am? I worked for it. But how come? When it comes to work, you discriminate me. How come? 
Hold on. I'm coming. 